Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Mehul and in this video, I'm going to share my 10 productivity hacks with you in VS Code. And mind you, this is not a list of 10 simple keyboard shortcuts, which pretty much are very common and everyone knows, but actual 10 productivity hacks, which I see a lot of people are missing out. So let's watch all of them in this one video. If you're new here, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. I will share a lot of such productivity tips, tricks and hacks and in general about web development. I share that all the time. So if you want to receive notification, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell icon. All right, tip number one is multi-root workspaces. Now I'm gonna give you a real world example of me working with CodeDAM. So CodeDAM, you know, has a front end in Next.js and a back end in GraphQL. So most of the times when I'm working with front end and it requires some sort of API work, I need to work with backend as well. It's a bit hard to manage two folders, two VS Code instances. So what you can do is if you also have multiple such folders, open the command palette and write a command saying workspaces, add a folder to workspace. So just write add folder to workspace and this should isolate this command. So the moment you do that, if you hit enter, you will see VS Code actually asks you for this particular folder, which should be the next folder. And right here, you can select, let's say in this case, backend. And when I add this, you can see there's a weird icon appearing here, which is like a radio button sort of thing. And when you close up, close both of them, they both kind of get selected. But the point here is now, even though they um, they might not be in same directory, in this case they are, but you have access to both of them, right? So the search would work fine, the terminal would work fine. So one neat thing you can see here is that if I am in a folders file of code down next, let's say, and if I start the terminal, I start with the code down next terminal, but if I am in a backend file, for example, if I am in this folder, I have this file open. And if you try to open the terminal in this folder, you will see it starts from the backend as the root directory, so that's pretty neat. But anyway, that's the trick. You can add multiple folders here and you can even name your workspace something so that you can just restore this anytime you want to just start working with the same thing again. The second tip which I have is to use GitHub Copilot. Now, GitHub Copilot is an extension which you can install by going to extensions right here and writing Copilot and you have to get access for this from GitHub. But once you do that, it's basically, it says that it's an AI pair programmer and it truly is. I mean, in some cases, GitHub Copilot it is very powerful it can do very simple things like write a function to add two numbers it could do simple tasks like this or it could do complex tasks like saying create a platform for interactive coding learning and as you can see github copilot just created code damn source code so it's pretty awesome i mean if you ask me it can just bootstrap your whole startups and companies well not yet but it's possible over the next few years so make sure you keep an eye and an extension on it the third tip which i have for a lot of people is try to use the command palette more what do i mean by that if you press let me just go ahead and actually start the developer toggle screencast mode first of all so you can see what i'm pressing if you press command p on the screen you can see that i have this panel where i have the ability to navigate between these files, right, with arrow keys. But the moment you write this greater than sign or less than sign, I don't know what you call this, but the moment you write this, you would see all of the files are gone now and these all are commands. So this symbol right here just means that you are trying to run a command. And pretty much everything you are thinking, you can do a lot of, most of the things, I won't say everything, but most of the things you can do from here. For example, hide the sidebar like this. For example, reload the window. So you can reload the whole VS Code window as well if you want like this and continue with your work. So you can see, apart from reload, there are a bunch of very useful commands here which you can write and a lot of extensions just plug into this as well. So if you have a bunch of extensions, maybe you will also find commands for that. But yeah, it's a, it's a handy uh, area to be in. It's almost like a mini Google for you inside of VS Code that what you want to do with your text editor. You can pretty much ask it anything you want, right? You can also say something like select all if you're feeling lazy and you know, you don't want to press command A or control A or whatever. All right, tip number four is pinned tabs in VS Code. Now I'm sure you know about pinned tabs in Chrome or any browser, but do you know that you can also pin tabs in VS Code? And one of the best things about this is once you pin tab by clicking, right clicking on this and doing this pin with command K or shift enter or just using this menu, the moment you do that, you can see the cross is no longer appearing here. Instead, pin symbol appear here and the command W just stops working, right? So the command W is not closing this tab. Instead, it just moves to the next file, right? So let me just again 
toggle the screen cast mode on and if i click this command w you can see nothing is happening so that is awesome let's say you have a bunch of important files in a swarm of files which you have opened the pin tab first of all would keep it uh you know at the at the very beginning if you try to rearrange it you can see that it just removes the pin so that is awesome and the second thing is that it would not allow you to close the file so that is again awesome sometimes i'm just on a streak of pressing this command w right and it's possible that you just pretty much close every file and the editor itself as well so just pin a couple of files which you think are important and just work freely my fifth tip is to actually go ahead and review your github pull request directly from vs code and this is very convenient because to be honest personally i don't like how the github pull request feature works in the sense you have two windows with a split where the lines are cut off and all that stuff it, it gets messy so if you have an editor that's a much better way to review a pull request the code part so what you have to do is go ahead and install this github pull request and issues extension and the moment you do that you will see a nice little icon which appears here and when you click on it if you are inside an active git repository which is connected to an origin as well you're gonna see all the open pull requests so in this case i just have one and i can just go ahead and review all the changes directly from my editor now don't actually go into font size here because obviously i've zoomed in for the video purpose but it looks pretty nice you get the control uh, you clearly see what's the difference between old and new and you pretty much have access to the full file right if you want to just compare something super handy extension i believe every code reviewer or every person who reviews you know their own work or maybe somebody else's work in a startup in a company this extension is a must because it will help you speed up the pull request a lot you don't have to have a lot of jumping around or context switching which probably happens when you're doing it from the web ui my sixth tip is to actually use vs code for refactoring purposes as well so for example let's say you want to rename this function to something else and you don't want to just go to every single individual file this could very well be a variable this could be a function like in this case this could be anything all you have to do is press the function key and f2 and this little menu would appear if it doesn't work for some reason just right click and locate this rename symbol thing right so the moment you do that you're gonna be seeing this enter to rename and enter to preview stuff and you can just say my email sender function for example and when you do that you can see every single file which had that got it changed right now all you have to do is to save all of these files which i mean i'm just combining two productivity tips in one so the the way you do it is a you can sure go to every single tab and press command s or control s or you can go to your command panel hit this command line and write save all right so you can see save all also has a shortcut the command k and s right you can memorize this shortcut but you'll only be able to memorize it once you start using it more and more right so if you're doing it every once in a while i mean it's fine you can just pretty much ignore it right but anyway once you do that you can see all of the files are saved together which is pretty handy even if you're doing you know any other sort of refactoring which changes all the files and is waiting for you uh, vs code is waiting for your approval to do that my seventh productivity hack is to actually not go ahead and just close and open your vs code window all the time i mean vs code is built on chromium and it provides a bunch of useful features which includes like performing a hot reload and a basically full reload as well without actually closing the parent process so let's say you are modifying your typescript file and you see that some changes are not reflected right so you can selectively reload those parts of the vs code application the way you do that is you again go to command ballot and write restart TypeScript server right and I haven't like configured a shortcut I don't think there is a shortcut anyway this is something you don't need to do a lot so no need to have a shortcut but the moment you write restart TypeScript it will show up and you can do this you're gonna see at the bottom it will say you initializing JSTS language features and that's how you know that it's restarting the TypeScript server sometimes it might happen when you are modifying some ts config file or maybe some es lint file as well so if you modify this some changes might not reflect so you can just go and say restart ESLint for example right here and it just restarts the ESLint server for you this is pretty handy in case something is broken or something is not working in the VS code itself you can just say re reload the window itself so it just reloads the full window right which again is mostly equivalent of closing and opening the VS code there might be spew edge cases but for the most part this would work without you actually just closing the whole project and you know doing all that stuff my eighth tip for you is reopening the last close tab sometimes it might happen when you are in speed you just randomly close a tab right 
randomly close a couple of tabs. So the moment you do that, you can actually restore your tabs by pressing Command Shift T, which might be Control Shift T if you're on Windows. And if you keep doing that, VS Code would just, you know, start undoing what it has done in terms of closing the tabs. So again, this is super handy sometimes because when you're on a streak to close all these tabs, you might see that you just missed and closed a couple more. So this is much, much better when you have I mean, when you have a lot of files and folders and hierarchy. So instead of just finding that exact piece of file, which you just closed, just do this. My number nine tip for you guys is to actually take a look at how you can move code in VS Code pretty quickly. I have seen people doing stuff like this. So if I want this to appear above this, I'm going to control X this, go here, hit enter a couple of times and press control V. This is the grandma move, right? The hacker move is the following. So you select the bunch of text which you want to move somewhere in the document and you press the option key. It might be alt key in your case. Press the option key and start moving it with arrow keys, arrow up or down, right? So you can see right here, as you're moving it through, it can actually pass through various code blocks as well. So that is pretty neat, right? So if you just want to move it at the top, you do something like this enter a bunch of lines and you're done right and it's a super fast super speedy way to actually move your code across you can move as much code as you like and you know every other code piece would actually adjust on the document super useful hack if you're trying to refactor a code base if you're trying to do something some cleanups and this would really help and my final tip for you is to use regular expressions when you're using vs code when you're trying to find and replace something this is not always helpful but when it is required then it becomes very very handy so for example let's just imagine you have a csv file with thousands of records and you want to do something very specific in terms of finding and replacing. Instead of writing a script to do that for you, you can very well just use a regular expression which you can toggle on by pressing this dot star thing which just toggles up the regular expression mode. That means now this find field would actually act as a regular expression field, right? Which will match against this file. So let's say in this file, I just want to add a new line after every single line which contains at least an L, right? You can see this line has an L, this line has an L, this line has an L, this line has an L. So the way to do that would be something like this. So you write an L, which is not a regular expression, but what you do is that you say that, hey, just lazily match anything in that L until I get a new line. So you can see right now VS Code has returned the following matches, which you can see ignores this something and yo, which does not contain an L. So the moment you do that, you can have, let's say I want an L, but also replace whatever you have matched against and with a couple of new lines now, right? So the moment I do that replace, you can see that pretty much works exactly how I wanted it to. Just after every single line with a new line, I just want a new, another line with that. So regular expressions are powerful. If you don't know the basics of them, I would probably create a crash course on them. So maybe we'll link it after this video, once that video is created. But yeah, I mean, this is, this is powerful stuff and it has saved me countless hours. I wouldn't say like tens of hours, but definitely a few hours over the last few years right so try learning about regular expressions and how you can make use of them in your find and replace thing all right so that was all about my 10 productivity vs code tips what do you think i missed which one is your favorite do let me know in the comments below if you like this video make sure you like and subscribe send it to your friends that really helps keeping a lot of content here at a high quality for free i hope you enjoyed this and i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon